I actually got an email back a couple months ago or more maybe saying this was a video only session, not with presentations. So I actually took a little time to make a video from A to Z. Um, and uh, um, that said, I learned all my video skills from Dr. Mills, so it's not that I'm saying that he didn't do a good job with his. Um, in any case, he really touched on really good points on how you get through an artery from the top to the bottom, meaning you poke the groin and then you maneuver a wire down below. Well, when all of those techniques fail, then you're kind of at the point where either you do a complicated bypass that might not be the best for the patient, or you go to some extreme techniques that would allow you to get the wire past the lesion. And that's when we get creative and we start from the bottom up. Um, and that means we'll puncture the foot or we'll puncture the ankle and we'll use really little catheters. So this video kind of walks you through some of those techniques and the reasoning behind them. And um, I'll kind of sit this one out because it's got everything embedded into it. Thank you. You know, you can't cross the Niagara Falls with a bicycle. You're bound to find the best pathway to get from A to B. Me di una sirimba un domingo en la mañana cuando menos lo pensaba. Caí redondo como una guanábana sobre la alcantarilla. ¿Será la presión o me ha subido la bilirrubina? Y me entró una calentura y me fui poniendo blanco como bola en aftalina. Me llevaron a un hospital de gente, supuestamente. So if you can't connect A to B in a straight line from the top to the bottom, then you go from the bottom to the top. The other way is if you can't connect a straight line of path, then you could actually find another path that actually works to perfuse an area. One of the reasons why, in theory, this works is because the organization of the plaque proximally is stronger and harder, and the distal cap is sometimes easier to perfuse. If you think that up to 20% of the patients don't get treatment integrally, then this makes a lot of sense to offer a therapy to more people. So let's go through the basics. You could puncture at the foot or a little bit below the knee. You could go for the posterior tibial, the perineal, the anterior tibial, or even the tibial perineal trunk. When you puncture, you could guide yourself with ultrasound or with fluoro. These are some of the sites we can select. Down by the foot at the dorsalis pedis, at the posterior tibial behind the malleolus. You could do a high posterior tibial stick. You could do a perineal stick and you can do a high anterior tibial stick. Now bear in mind in an anatomical cross-section of the foot that when you're trying to aim for the perineal, you're going to go through that inner osseous membrane and that is a thick fibrous membrane. So when you puncture down, make sure that the needle comes almost at a 90 degree angle or it's going to be hard for you to go through that. And yes, I do need to say use clean and new needles. I've had this happen in the past in different countries. When you want to access that via fluoro, then you have to take advantage of the fact that fluoroscopy will give you different angles of views. And ultimately, you try to come at an angle that falls exactly on top of the artery you're accessing. So the II in this specific case is aiming for a dorsalis pedis stick. You could use the calcium of the artery, which I call the calcium map, or use a road map, or eventually just a live shot. Once you secure your wire, then you decide, do I want to use a micropedal sheath or do I want to just use a sheathless axis? I like pedal sheaths because you can give drugs and do angios at the same time. So let's see a case example. This is a constitution of the dorsalis pedis. So you can either prep the leg before or sometimes you actually just open the drape and prep the leg when you decide that you're going to do this. Once prep and draped, you're going to numb up the skin and start. This just exemplifies how the medial calcinosis is even hard to beat with a needle. That dorsalis pedis wiggles around as you're trying to poke it. But once you get the wire in, then you slowly traverse in a retrograde fashion. It is ideal to always use a catheter or microcatheter or micro balloon, as you can see on the right, to support it. And that allows you to do the angioplasty and get flow down and have an adequate perfusion of the anterior aspect of the foot as in this case that allowed us to do an adequate TMA. This is a great case in where you could see the complexity of the collaterals that would never allow the wire to go from the top to the bottom in an easy fashion. Um, 
once we decided that this was a good case for an anterior retrograde approach, then it was actually accessed high above near the patella. Let me show you some of the videos that actually um, allowed you to understand this. So you first go through the skin uh, and using diagnostic angio you could pretty much align the needle to the artery and then slowly a millimeter at a time you direct downwards until you get through a micro puncture needle that little brisk flow. Once you're there, ideally use a long wire, don't use a short wire. The long wire can allow you to start your procedure already. Although if you don't have a long landing zone then it's rather better to use a short wire that has good support. Once the wires uh, safely across the lesion and into the artery, which you can all see on the screen and confirm fluoroscopically. At that point, you just secure your pedal micro sheath and then do the intervention. Put the wire in a retrograde fashion, use a micro balloon, and your angioplasty is done. Although normally it's easy to find your path, sometimes you'll find yourself trapped in a dissection plane. This piece of art describes the Michelangelo technique, where two things come from above and below in an attempt to find themselves. This is a complex case we had, where there was a wire from above and below, but we unfortunately couldn't find our path. We couldn't connect. Two dissection planes. Let's see it in a graphical fashion. A wire from above, complex black. A wire from below, complex black. What you do is you create a new lumen by inflating a balloon. And then with a hollow needle re-entry device that perforates through the balloon, you could actually put a wire in to capture it in the inside of the balloon. You could see it in this live image as that needle projects itself, penetrates the inside of the balloon, allowing you to slide, in other words, your wire into it. Once the wire is in, you are free to actually maneuver yourself distally. The rest from there on is securing your wire distally and then doing the angioplasty from above, from top to bottom. So let's let this uh, wire dance its way down and hopefully give us a good result. Alguien se apiada de mí, grité perdiendo el sentido. Y una enfermera se acercó a mi oreja y me dijo, tranquilo Bobby, tranquilo. Acarició con sus manos de vengue y me dijo, ¿qué le pasa, atleta? Y le conté con lujo de detalles lo que me había sucedido. Now that's what I call wire salsa. In any case, um, as you can see, we were able to acquire a posterior tibial all the way down inline flow to the foot. Let's look at another situation that's very interesting. This is a case that has great collaterals, and as you can see, there is an adequate perineal that opens down below through the collaterals. Retrograde allows you to also do techniques from below that actually do not imply percutaneous punctures. This is a technique where we actually went through the collateral and in the spirit to try to get the artery open. Unfortunately, this gentleman had a bypass before. It was a femoral to the perineal bypass and the wire would constantly go up the old bypass. I decided to do a perineal retrograde axis and unfortunately the wire would not go straight because apparently it was a terminal terminal on anastomosis. So eventually we were going into the bypass, we angioplasty that bypass in a retrograde fashion and we were actually very happy to find out that after our retrograde techniques we got the bypass back again and open. Thinking outside of the box people, that's what we're trying to do. Remember if you can't connect A to B or B to A, then find another path to get from A to B. And this is what we're doing in this last case. There's no way to acquire a posterior tibial, either retrograde or anterograde. So what you could do is you could start going through the connections between the anterior perfusion and the posterior perfusion. We could actually find some of the transmetatarsal bridges that would allow you with patients and the adequate hydrophilic wire to, as you can see on the screen, maneuver yourself from the dorsalis pedis circulation into the plantar circulation. Once you do that, that allows you to actually um, engage into the artery in a retrograde fashion, do an angioplasty, and actually um, retroperfuse 
a angiosome that's hypoperfused, which is great in cases of orphan heel syndrome. Well, that's all for today, folks. Um, I would just like to uh, throw out a special thanks uh, to all of our amigos at our salsa program who make this dream a reality. Thank you very much for being here.